Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our album review of Vault of Horrors by Aborted. So we've been listening to this album non-stop for an entire week straight. I'm going to open up the floor and talk about how this album really stood the test of time. Because that's what we do on this channel. We're listening to these albums throughout the whole week to see if they still hold up, to see if our opinion changes. I don't know if I really expressed it in last week's first impressions video, but I had a small concern coming into this week wondering, is this album going to have enough standout moments or is it going to feel like just the same stuff going on every song? Mm -hmm. Not to say that I was overly worried about that after a first listen, but it was in the back of my head wondering, is this, like I, ha I had a small concern that this could happen. Okay. Early on in the week, it didn't really feel that bad in, in regards to that. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't really feel stale. And th that's, that's when you know an album is just kind of samey, is that it, it stales out and you feel like, oh, whatever, I can just put this on and just not care. Mm -hmm. But I was putting this album on and early on in the week, I'm like, yeah, this is still pretty cool when I'm putting this on. But even so throughout the week, I could still put this album on and still have fun with it. You know, it, it wasn't a case of, I got the fatigue and that's a sign of a good album. Right. I do feel that a few songs kind of feel like there's just stuff and that's it. And I think when you have, you know, a band that, I know a lot of people will say this is just a straight up death metal band. I'd say they lean a little bit more into technical death metal considering how crazy these guys' chops are. And I feel like there are some tracks where it's just kind of like wall of sound kind of stuff. And that's cool. But if you have that a little too much, it starts to get less special. Yeah. But they do have a few songs on this record that not only have some standout moments, but also don't do that. So then, okay, you break it up a little bit there. So, um, for example, a song like Dreadbringer, which is the first track featuring Ben Dur of Shadow of Intent, it's a good, strong, just metal song. Straight up. But outside of the intro, kind of having this quiet synth going on, mm -hmm. the song kind of came and went for me. Wasn't necessarily bad, but it was just kind of there. That being said, then you get a song like Death Cult, which has uh, Steve Mawa from Despise Icon. That song uh, has a distinct intro, um, it, rhythmically, and it doesn't, like, it has a slower groove. The feature is awesome. Yeah. Steve sounds sick, his voice is clear, distinct. It's kick-ass every, every time he comes into that track. Mm -hmm. And I like that a lot. So that, that's a good example of how this album distincts itself. Um, another one that I found interesting, and it's for a different reason, is Insect Politics. It has a different form than everything else where it kind of has this explosion and then you've got these riffs and then explosion at the end and then it's done in a minute 44. It ends super abruptly too, like you wouldn't expect it. It kind of ends before anything else can start. I like that they did that because it's something different. Yeah. It's not like it's a, they tried something different and it didn't work. They tried something different and it goes outside the box, mm -hmm. but it's not like too different to the point that, okay, they're getting a little too weird. Mm -hmm. That song featuring J Jason Evans from Ingested, which is cool. So I liked that song for that. Um, another thing that stood out to me a little bit was the solo from Hellbound. It's like nothing else really from that song like super duper stood out except for the solo. Whenever it came on, I'm like, yeah, this is a pretty cool solo. I like the guitar tone in this solo. I agree. So that's actually my only note for that song. <laughs> yeah, well, well there you go. We Case got point. Yeah. Um, so uh, another thing, I also like the solo from the Golgothan. That was a pretty cool one. It kind of sounded like two people are trading. I wasn't entirely sure. It kind of sounded like some, some solo trading there. Mm -hmm. um, Hal from Engulf sounded pretty cool on it as well. Um, and there's also this cool guitar line that happens in the background of the track at times. It's subtle and it took a while, like maybe until later in the week that I noticed. Hmm. Um, but then, you know, that, that was a neat thing as well. Another track, and this one actually took me a while to really, really like appreciate was The Shape of Hate. 
featuring Oliver from Archspire. Yep. And <laughs> it's funny, because at first I thought to myself, I wonder if they could get the guy from Archspire on one of these with all these features. I didn't realize, wait a minute, they did get the guy from Archspire, because he's well known for super duper fast, um, harsh singing, yep. which is really hard to do. And I was wondering, does he do it? And then I really focused on the track. I'm like, he does do it. The only thing is that I feel like the mix is weird and it kind of covers his voice a bit. Mm. When you listen to Arch Spire and you hear his voice, it's really clear and pronounced. It's clarity, yeah. I kind of found that it was covered up by the rest of the band when he was doing it. It still sounded cool. I could hear it. Yeah. But I feel like maybe the mix could have um, put a little bit more focus on the vocal a bit more so you could more clearly hear it because it sounds awesome. Okay. And... Um, the guitar solo in that song is sick as well. So, um, I also thought Malevolent Haze, which is the last track of the album featuring Ricky Hoover of Sulphur, I like that in the middle of that song they totally like break it all down, uh, not in the breakdown sense, but in the quiet sense. Yeah. And then there's a guitar solo, and I like that they ride on that until the end of the track. So I think not only is it a cool way to close the album, but I like that it's also once again something different. Mm -hmm. So. You know, there are all these these moments and things that stand out, but at the same time, a lot of the tracks are kind of just there. And they're not bad, but they're there. And I, yeah. I feel like it's the kind of album that if you want just some hard metal, like if you're just like, I want some something aggressive, something angry, something that gets the blood pumping, this is a perfect album for that. Yeah, it's generally how, generally how I feel about this band, to be honest. Like... These albums, uh, like Aborted in general, is like, for listening pleasure, never miss. Yeah. Like, yeah, every yeah. song is just awesome, 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 awesome. But when you start, like, when it comes to reviewing, for example, and we got to sit there with, like, kind of like a microscope, listening to these bands, trying to think of and find stuff to basically brag about to you guys in these reviews, it becomes kind of difficult to find stuff. I don't really know why. Is it because it's just so loaded with stuff, and it's just like, now you're trying to find really exceptional stuff to stand out that might be a little unfair mm -hmm. but that's the position you get put in because you listen to like kind of like a wall to wall of just brutal assault where is the where's the special moments but we've seen albums like that where they are wall to wall brutality and we've given those albums toe tags we but have th there's a way it's done that's right that that um it's just, it's hard to define specifically, but I think you need to have a lot of nuance in your record to be able to pull that off and have it stand the test of time that way. That's right. And when you have an album like this, uh, you know, 10 tracks and every track has a feature on it. Uh, in my opinion, I would think that every track's gonna have its own distinct personality. And I feel like there's a couple tracks on this album that do, but I think most of them don't. And as far as the features go, there's only, for me anyway, uh, a few features that actually stand out and are, and are kind of notable. Mm -hmm. um, like when you hear Ben Jura sing, you're gonna kind of recognize his voice because he's got such a different tone. Um, when I hear um, Matt Begaichi sing, I don't quite pick out his tone because he sounds too similar to you know, other singers. At least to me, maybe other people can pick that out. I'm not sure. Another thing I want to note is that all but two of the features list the person's name, except for song number one features Shadow of Intent and track number four features Despised Icon, which I think might mean there's other band members performing there too. Maybe it's not just the vocalist. Uh, and but one of the reasons I think that, what? Like, would you have noticed that? Well, this is one of my, like, my, my uh, one of the things I'm, that made me think that is in Death Cult with featuring Despised Icon. This sounds like a Despised Icon song. Riff-wise, it sounds like Despised Icon. The intro of the, this is the most identifiable track on the album easily for me. Yeah. Because it, when it starts, it doesn't sound like aborted anymore. It sounds like Despised Icon. And interesting. Because when I was listening to this album throughout the week, every time Death Cult came on, I'm like, that's you Death Cult. Do it right Cult. away. Yes. You and do it, it right away. Instant. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I felt similar to, um, is it Deadbringer or Dreadbringer? I believe it's Dreadbringer. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wrote Deadbringer in my notes. Maybe it's Dreadbringer. Maybe I wrote it wrong. Anyways, I felt the same for that, where the riffs kind of felt different. They felt like they were a little bit more Shadow of intent -y. but maybe that was just me convincing myself because it said that and it didn't say Ben Jur, mm -hmm. right? So I just thought that was interesting that they did it that way. Um, 
Another song that I thought stood out because of the feature was The Shape of Hate, featuring Oliver from Arch Spire. This guy's got a uh, very um, identifiable vocal style. It, they yeah. call it the shotgun vocals, which it should be machine gun vocals because it doesn't sound like a shotgun. <laughs> it sounds like a machine gun. Very rapid, very uh, uh, metronomic with the phrasing. Um, just, you know, it, it's a feature that, to me, it's a feature that matters and makes a difference. Um, the best song in this album, though, for me, is one you already mentioned, that's in Insect Politics. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best song of the album. It's short, like less than two minutes, uh, just has nasty riffs. Um, I really just like the attack on this song. It feels more, more ferocious than other tracks. Not yeah. by much, because they're all kind of in the same camp, but it edges them out. In one way or another, it just does it. It's just a really solid song. For as short as it is, it went in the playlist right away because it just is such a fun listen for that minute and 44 seconds. There is a few songs that unfortunately just, yeah, they came and went, right? Um, Condemned to Rot, which we did react to. Um, again, you've mentioned this before for, from other albums. You might even mention this on the First Impressions, but these songs on their own, or as you like to put it, these songs in a vacuum, um, all sound great on their own. But when you listen to them on the album, Sometimes some songs can suffocate other songs and basically bury them and then you don't even realize they're there half the time you listen to it. But that's one. Hellbound, other than the guitar solo, was another one. The Golgothan, um, Naturum Demonto. That one just constantly came. I have no notes for that song. Not Track did, number not nine. Did I. Nothing for that one. Um, you know, this this album is was fun to listen to. I, I did not get bored of it. It did not stale out of me at all. But to be bluntly honest, writing notes for it was quite difficult because I didn't feel like there was a lot standing out. There wasn't a lot that was, uh, you know, making me think this is a playlist worthy song or I really need to listen to this again or oh my God, did you, uh, you know, messaging TV fish, like, did you hear that part kind of thing? Like, yeah. there wasn't a lot of that. And it's 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 a weird, it's weird when you reveal an, review an album like this. Because yeah. I really like it, but it's just, there's not a lot there. So where, how, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of what to do, how about we rate this album? Okay, um, so, so I'll rate the album. First, I want to give a shout out to the album art. That's okay. a sick album art. The album art's sick. Um, it's one of my favorites this year so far. Uh, oh, yeah. If you don't know, it's references to a few things like Vial from Cannibal Corpse, Hacked Up for Barbecue by Mortician, and um, there's also a movie that came out in 1988, I think, or 89, called The Church, and the box art for that has like basically a mound of bodies. Um, and then there's all kinds of little Easter eggs and nods to different other horror movies and, and um, metal bands and things like that. Just super creative, beautiful colors, very well done. Uh, the guy that did it, I think his name is Dan Golding or Dan Goldberg or Goldstein or something like that. Um, great artist, he's done a lot of cover arts. But anyways, just wanted to shout that out because it's fucking awesome. It is awesome. Um, as for my rating, so I did, I've been doing the same type of rating method all since this year started. And uh, basically it's to standardize my ratings. And based on that, this album gets a five. It's, um, you know, half of it is awesome. The other half is really blah, like, mm -hmm. and that's all kind of just mixed together. It's not like first half good, second half bad. It's just, it's like just, between. it's just, it's just all in between. Yeah. Um, one really great song, a few other really good features. I should also give a shout out to um, Johnny Ciardiolo from Carcosa on Brotherhood of Sleep. That's another really good feature. That guy's got a sick voice. I love that guy's voice. He's got a really, um, gurgly kind of rasp in his in his mm. high in his high harshes so just a shout out to that but um yeah man this is it, it it's a weird one because i really like the album it's just awesome to listen to but for a review there's not much there for it yeah it's very difficult especially when you have to put it under the microscope as you said yeah as for my rating uh you know i listed off a bunch of things that stood out about this, about this album to me but outside of those things it is an album that came and went i didn't necessarily get bored of it I didn't necessarily dislike it by any means, but it didn't feel like an exceptional album, but still strong. And I feel like anyone who just wants, like I said, something super heavy and you're in that super heavy mood, this is a perfect album for you. It's gonna get a six from me. I think it's a good album, but it's not among the greatest. So that's a six from TV Fish and a five from me for Vault of Horrors by Aborted. 
Anyways, guys, that's it for this review. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your thoughts and comments down below and let us know what you guys think of this album after a whole week. And subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. I'll see you guys on the next one.